Hey there, Wargamers. Austin here with Death Ray Designs, and here on the seventh day of Christmas, we're gonna paint some bases. So we're gonna start off with the Warp Strider bases. Now, these are the bases that match our Warp Strider set. I actually came out before them, but we use a lot of the same textures on both of them, so these bases match really well with the whole set. Um, we used a lot of those textures in the, the top of the blocks for this and the Deadbolt's Derelict set. So we're gonna try to paint up this base to look like the top of that block. So we're gonna be using some grays and some reds, and we might sneak in some gold too. So let's get in here close and we'll get started. This base is comprised of a couple pieces. We've got our, our actual base here. This is just a, a blank that we cut out of acrylic. Uh, you'd normally use you know, whatever base came with the model. Then you've got this piece that's on top of that and the top piece. So you've got essentially three layers here. You've got your base, which you can see through the holes in the bottom layer, and you've got your middle base that you can see through holes in the top layer. So we need to figure out where our colors are going, and we want to do all this painting before we assemble it because we can do a lot more interesting details more quickly with it separate. So before we start masking anything off, we're going to put some red down in this general area. We're going to keep the the grate here in that round piece red as well. So over here, we're gonna have a different color and over here we'll have different colors. But since we're gonna do red here, we'll put red down, then we'll mask over it and then we'll start working on the next section. So before we put the red down, we're gonna use some white in the middle here to bring our tone up. So that when we put the red down, it'll be brighter in the center. Okay, so as soon as that dries, we'll throw some red down on there and we'll get a nice gradient from dark red to a very bright red and back to dark. So next up, we're gonna use a bright red here. This one is Angelic Blood from Minotaur, but any bright red will do. We're gonna go little bit by bit here. Okay, make sure we're covering the area that we want to be red. Here we go, you can see we've got a really nice dark red on the sides, a much brighter red in the middle, and it darkens up on the far side. So, uh, next up we're gonna be doing some masking, so let's bring that in. Okay, so I've cut a little piece of frisket film that we're gonna use. Uh, if you're not familiar with frisket film, it's essentially like masking tape, but it is a clear plastic and it's a very low tack adhesive. So we're gonna put this down, you can see right through it to all the detail, and you know exactly where to cut. Also, one of the added benefits with our base toppers is because the details are engraved, uh, it just helps guide the knife across. So, we're gonna pop that in, continue that off to that side, and then we'll come in here. I'm gonna skip over that middle piece for a second, cut over here. And now, starting at one side, get down into that groove, and slowly come around that edge and meet back up over here. So there we go, we've got that. Now, as we peel this away, we wanna be careful and make sure that we do it slowly in case anything catches, we have a chance to trim it up again, but I think we're all clean and now our red area is protected and we can start working on the next section. So I've also gone back over some of the areas where we had red overspray from the previous step and I've put a little bit more black down just so that we get a nice even uh, starting place for the next steps. So let's take some gray. We've got just a, a medium gray here and we're gonna coat some of the spots around this. So the areas basically that aren't under the, the masking film at the moment. Um, on this area, I kind of want to have it a little bit brighter in the middle and let it fade to uh, darker areas on the outside. So we'll do a quick once over coat with this medium gray, and then I'll bring it up just a little bit in the middle. And we'll probably at the end go back around with something to darken up those edges a little bit. After this dries, we'll do a little bit more masking and then we'll isolate this textured area in the middle and uh, we should probably be darkening that up. So we'll load up some black and we'll be back in a sec. 
Next, we're gonna take a slightly lighter gray, and the areas that we're gonna be focusing on here are gonna be mostly the areas around the textured area. We wanna be brighter in the middle and darker towards the edges. Okay. So I've gone ahead and put another piece of frisket film on here, and we're gonna cut out around our textured pieces of the platform. So let's go ahead and Let's peel slowly, make sure we don't have any snags. There we go. So I've loaded up some black into the airbrush here and we want to basically just tone this whole area down that we've removed the mask over. We're not trying to necessarily do anything fancy here. We just want to, to bring it down so that um, it's got some differentiation from the areas around it. So here we go. Just tiny, tiny little bit here. If you want to do anything, you can go a little darker right at the edge. There we go. That should be enough of a differentiation. We can test this before we remove all of it and just see. Yep, that looks like a very uh, easy, noticeable difference. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, fantastic. So I've already put some more masking down and we've left this section at the edge uh, unmasked this time. Uh, this is the piece that goes over this grating and I think this would be an excellent spot to do a little bit of brass slash gold work and maybe on these recessed sections that you can see through the holes in the other part of the base. So let's get started. I've got some Vallejo bronze loaded up and let's start putting a light coat down on these sections. Okay, so that's a, a good starting point I like that we still have some of that leftover transition on the top where it was lighter in the middle and darker on the edge. So this is gonna have a little bit of added differentiation from what's below it already. Uh, I also went a little lighter here so we'd have more of the black showing through and I think that's really gonna help. But to shade this further, I'm gonna use some uh, ghost tint purple. Uh, you could just use a thin down uh, translucent purple from whatever line you've got and we'll do a little bit of shading in here just to give it a little extra pop. So now we're gonna find just a few little spots along the edge to hit with the purple. We don't want to overdo it here. It is easy to overdo. There we go, that darkened up nicely. And then we'll do the same just on those prongs there. Okay, there we are. Uh, actually, we should probably do some on that center piece too. So let's just pick a side and just have it sort of transition. Oop, got away from me a little bit. That's okay. It's gonna be down in those recesses. And that's just fine. Okay, cool. So our next step is gonna be doing just a little bit of dry brushing. We're going to try to separate this layer from this layer by doing two different dry brush colors. We'll do a brighter gold up here and we'll go back to the same bronze that's on there now and dry brush and it'll just sort of highlight over top of the purple. You don't want to kill all the purple, but you want to, to basically bring it back to that same original color right at the edges. So let's get that loaded up. Okay, so we've got a much brighter gold here, and this is going to go on our upper level. We're going to take off almost all of that paint from the brush before we dry brush. We don't want this to be super over the top. We don't want streaks or anything. We just want to catch the edges. So here we go. Okay, it's a subtle effect, don't need to go to town on it. There we go, we've got just a little bit of edge going on there, maybe even a little too much already. So, we're gonna take a little bit of the bronze for the lower area. Let me get most of that paint off. We're just gonna brush over that real quick. And that helps highlight all those little rings really quickly. Um, you could do the same thing over here. You might be able to catch a little texture on that. At the very least, you could get a little bit of streaks there that might add a little interest to that lower area. So at this point, really all that's needed is to unmask this bad boy and see how we're looking. So we've got it all put together. I think this is looking great. Uh, if you wanted to do a little extra weathering on a bit of a time budget here. You could easily take some dark brown uh, and a piece of open cell foam. This is just a piece out of a 
KR multi-case, so I'm sure you've got something laying around. You can just sort of tap at the edges of things and add just a little bit of chipping effect here and there that can really make this look a little bit more torn up, used, lived in. I think these kinds of effects really bring pieces to life. And honestly, this kind of technique takes no time at all. If you like the way it looks, there's no excuse not to do it. You could also do pigment powders and all kinds of washes or ghost tints or other weathering effects like typhus corrosion or any of the other types of um, corroded technical paints from Games Workshop. Now that we're done with that piece, let's move on to something super simple that you could do an entire army in under an hour. So this is gonna be really fast and easy. We're gonna use uh, a gray color and some dark brown, and we'll probably go with a light gray as well uh, for some mid-tones. That bottle is really ugly. Um, but uh, you could use most of these things as brattle can spray paint if you don't have an airbrush. But for the sake of the filming space, we're gonna be using an airbrush instead of rattle cans. Um, but like I said, you can, you can use spray paint if that's, if that's what you got. So we've got our light gray loaded up first. And we're just gonna put a quick coat down over everything. And we're gonna to try to brighten up the center here. Mostly what we're doing here is trying to brighten up the center I'm coming in at an oblique angle just so that we're not going straight in and getting into the details. We wanna leave those as, as dark as we can from the priming process. So for this technique, um, we're gonna do a really simple sort of sponge uh, effect. And for this, we're gonna tear up the edge of this so that it's uneven and we don't have any really sharp lines or any repeated patterns here. So I'm just gonna work at this for a second. And we don't really have to do the backside so much because we're gonna be using this to sort of drag over everything. We've still got a pretty hard line here, so I'm gonna to try to pick away at that a little bit and break it up some more. And the idea is that we're kind of using this as uh, a comb to drag paint over in a variety of um, different areas in streaks and lines so that we get kind of a hanger deck feel, where there's not a whole lot of complicated color patterns. We just have a lot of streaks from different equipment being used or ships landing and taking off. So we're gonna use this as our tool to wipe across the surface of our base once we have some paint on it. And I think we'll probably orient it this way so streaks go that way. So let's load up on some gray. This is probably gonna be somewhat subtle for this first layer. We don't necessarily want it to be too bold and crazy. And I'm just gonna sort of dab some of this off just so we're not dragging huge amounts of paint around. So here we go. Let's try to do this. I'm gonna end up putting a lot of paint on my finger doing this, but when these are still in the sheets that they come in, it's gonna be a lot easier to do a bunch of these all at once. So there we go. Let me start in the middle here and get some drags that way. You want to make sure that you stay dragging in the same direction. I'm going to flip it around. Drag from the other direction. Okay, so we've got the, the sort of starting basis for this, but we're going to want to add a little bit more high contrast, and we'll probably want to go away from gray and maybe more like a brown color. Um, I find that that ends up working really nicely for these. Uh, it ends up giving you a variety of sort of types of scorch marks. So for this, I'm going to use dark shadow. And I'm just gonna sort of throw this in on top of the gray that's on this little piece of wax paper here. Okay, so I have dabbed some of the, the gray off of my sponge, but we're gonna load it up pretty heavily. And we might not go quite as all over the place with this one. Uh, try to sort of, uh, identify a few little sections to do it on. Okay, and that's really super intense. So what we're gonna do is take our, our towel and drag it, lessen that down just a little bit. 
so that we're getting a little more of a subdued kind of effect. Maybe we'll drag some from this side. I want to make sure that we're, we're pulling always the same direction perpendicular. I do like how that's catching on some of those, those edges there. I think that looks rather nice. Maybe we'll just lessen a little bit of this and we'll leave some of that a little bit more potent. Yeah, I really like that. It's looking really nice. And if you want to, you can use some of that same brown on your sponge brush and come in and just sort of touch a few places, kind of like what we were doing on the other base to give yourself some little chipping. Because you know this, this area is going to be dinged up and scuffed and probably rusting in places. So throwing a little bit of this on, it always ends up picking up really nicely on the edges of things and just making it look a little more realistic. So there we go. Um, let's get a little bit of wash and we can do some more rust streaking and that'll finish that one up. So I've just got some Agrax Earthshade and a detail brush. And we're gonna find a few little key areas that we wanna accentuate here. With some, some extra sort of streaky sort of formations here. Following our lines that we established before and then having them originate on lines um, gives the, the illusion of water gathering in those grooves in the deck and then being pushed around. So whatever sort of afterburners are coming off of these ships or equipment taking off and landing, they're pushing whatever remaining fluid or oil or something in these panel lines out in a unified direction. Okay. And I better stop before I overdo this. You can also, if you, if you want to have an origination point at, like say some of these little rust chips here, that's also perfectly fine. You can imagine if any water was sitting on them and start to discolor. And there we go. So now all that's left is to glue this down to our base. We've got our acrylic puck as we use on the other one. Just gonna use a little bit of super glue. And we'll tack this down here. So on the base underneath, you could always add a little bit of coloration to go along with the, the rust and um, any kind of weathering that you do on the top surface but leaving it black also gives you a really nice contrast um, and highlights that there is depth there. So uh, I think with that, we can call that one finished too. So we've looked at two very different basing techniques here using our base toppers, one with a little bit more time investment, one on more of a time crunch. Both of them just a set of simple techniques stacked together to give you two different effects. If I can do it, you can do it. Check out the other videos in this series. We've had a few so far, and there's gonna be another one tomorrow. So make sure to check those out. You can also see all the products from this video and the rest of the series over at deathraydesigns.com 12 days. There's special pricing through the end of the event. Hope that you've enjoyed this video, learned something, or at least had fun hanging out with us. So until next time, happy wargaming.